Bishop for allowing me to come here and to share the word of God with the people of God. Bwana wabariki sana. Um, kama mlivyo sikia, my name is Glorious Shaw. Ninatoka Tanzania. Mkoa wa Kilimanjaro. Mahali panaitwa Moshi. Let's go to the Bible. To the book of Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I'm going to read the verse that you know very well and maybe you must have read recently. And I'm still saying you need to keep on listening carefully. Amen. Romans chapter 10 and I will read verse 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Faith comes through hearing or from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Father, we come before you again this morning, believing that you will speak to your people. Enlighten our minds. Let us comprehend what you have prepared for us this morning. I pray for myself that, Lord, you will anoint me as your servant. Let this word come out with power. Let the word come out, Lord, with conviction of the Holy Spirit. Speak to us. Speak to your people. For edification, encouragement, and a strengthening of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are talking about faith and number one, the Bible says how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing the word. Amen. But that word that we hear, for it to be a Christian faith, for it to be a biblical faith, it has to carry the message of Christ. Hallelujah. Are you there? So when, when you build yourself, if you want to build faith, you have to have more of the word of Christ over and over for that faith to be built. I can tell you there are a lot of projects that God wanted you to do and wanted me to do and this project were never done because of lack of faith. There are a lot of things that we would have accomplished but we didn't accomplish them because of challenges that we received because we had the word of God and we didn't know how to keep that word and to see it fulfilled. God is giving a lot of us visions. God is giving us, a lot of us is giving us our projects in our hearts and in our minds. A lot of us, God is taking us to places so that Christ may be known. But because of the process that we go through, we kind of go down and forsake the faith. And then we don't receive. 
I'm here this morning to encourage you so that you may come back to what God is calling you to do. And each and every one of you has got an assignment that you need to fulfill. Yes. Hallelujah. Can you tell your neighbor you carry an assignment with you? Yes. Tell your other neighbor you carry an assignment with you. Yes. Now how do I know the assignment that God has given me? When I am born again, my spirit becomes a lot. My spirit becomes new. I am regenerated and so I can hear the word of Christ. Christ can speak to me because I am born again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, ready for the word of Christ. Christ will speak to me. Now each and every one of us has a different assignment. My assignment is not like your pastor's assignment. Your pastor's assignment is not like other pastor's assignments. Each one has a different assignment but at the end God would like to see us completing the assignment that he gave us for his glory hallelujah now who becomes the supervisor of an assignment that is given to anyone the author of the assignment are you getting it so if, if your teacher gives you assignment who becomes the supervisor of that assignment the teacher he, he, he checks the process if you are doing what he intends you to fulfill hallelujah so faith comes through hearing and that hearing has to be from the message of Christ right. hallelujah hallelujah are you following me yes. now so the first thing that starts with any assignment that God gives you is called promise. Can you say promise? So the word that you hear, the word that God gives you, the word that drops in your heart to highlight the assignment that you are given, it is what? Can you say it again? Can you say it again? Promise. You just find a promise from the Bible and that promise becomes like... Whoosh. Have you read the Bible and then it becomes like some pages are jumping out. Some words are jumping out of the pages. Umewe kusoma Biblia, alafu unaona kama kuna maneno yanaruka. Kuna maneno yanapiga kelele kuliko mengine. What do we call that? Hayo ndio, hayo ndio, hayo maandiko ndio ahadi ya Mungu. Hayo ndio maagano yake na wewe. Na anataka kila siku usome humo ili unaposoma imani inazidi kufanya nini? Kujengwa. Ba God is so different from every other teacher that gives you assignment. Hello? He allows challenges to follow the promise. So after the promise, in the process, there is what is called problems. So you hear the word of Christ. You hear about every kind of promise, healing, blessings, wealth, riches, holiness, whatever you hear from it, there comes challenges in the form of what? Ebusema, promise, there comes problem. In our father nini? Problems. Mungu anapenda sana hiyo. Hebu mwambie jirani yako Mungu upenda problems. The Bible logical right. Eti 
Mungu anapenda problems. Unajua kwa nini anapenda? Kwa sababu yeye ndiye mtatuzi wa problems. Kazi yake haiwezi kuonekana pasipo pasipo kuwepo na hizo opportunity. So problems to him becomes an opportunity to intervene. Problems to him becomes an opportunity to show off his power. Problems to him becomes an opportunity to show who he is and to prove his power to prove his faithfulness to prove his kindness to prove his goodness hallelujah are you following eh mwambie jirani yako unajua matatizo ni fursa matatizo Hebu mwambie jirani yako unajua matatizo ni fursa? Kwa hiyo kama unayo tayari Mungu ana fursa. Hallelujah. If there are some challenges in your life, you are just saying, "Wow, God has got an opportunity to show himself powerful, to show himself faithful, to show himself omnipotent, omniscient." Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hakuna namna nyingine, hakuna mahali pengine yatajulikana. Lazima pawepo na changamoto. Changamoto zinapokuepo ni fursa. Mwambie jirani yako changamoto huleta fursa kwa Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now after the problems after the promise there comes problems and these problems comes in various forms and the form that the problems come ni ya kwanza kuonyesha ya kwamba he hiyo Mungu aliyokuambia ni ngumu hiyo aliyokuambia haiwezekani hiyo aliyokuambia ni kubwa kubwa mno sijui itakuwaje Hello Are you following me? Are you following me? Hallelujah. So there comes this problem and now God wants you to trust him in the process. And so he brings in a process. Some of us process may be longer some of us may be shorter he chooses according to how he wants your process may not be like my process don't ever take my testimony and think god is going to do the same to you he will do to you what he did to me but how he did may be different Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what you need to do in the process number one, when you are going through the problems and through the process about the promise that God gave you, number one, what you need to remember is to keep on holding on unto the promise that he gave you. Hallelujah. Tuko pamoja. Tuko pamoja. Faith never remains silent. Hebu mwambie jirani yako imani hupiga kelele. Imani hainyamazi. Imani was never meant to be quiet. God never meant faith to be quiet in our minds and in our hearts. If you want to know someone who believes there must be a shout about what he believes. Lazima pawepo na kelele. Lazima pawepo na sauti inayosema naamini nini. Imani sio ya kimya. Tunaenda pamoja. Kwa hiyo ukikaa na mtu vya kutosha inatosha kuelewa anaamini nini. Why? Sema atapiga kelele. Either 
imani hasi au imani chanya imani meaning hasi meaning negative or positive hiyo nayo ni imani una, una, unajua kuamini mabaya ni imani pia Unajua kuamini uongo ni imani? Una, unajua kuamini shetani ana nguvu ni imani? Unajua kuamini ya kwamba utakufa ni imani? Na unajua itakuwa utapokea sawasawa na imani yako. Utapokea sawasawa na imani yako. Kwa hiyo unachagua kwenye process kuachana na kuamini ambacho sio promise ya Mungu. Hallelujah. In in the book of uh, Romans uh, second book of uh, I'm sorry not, not Romans second book of Corinthians. Tunaenda pamoja. Second book of Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. The Bible says this. Tunazungumza habari ya problem na process. Sawa. For the uh, second book of Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. Okay. It is written I believed therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, when you have spirit of faith, what happens? We also believe and therefore we speak. So faith shouts. There is no way you can have faith and keep quiet about what you are believing. You must shout. You must say it. Speak it. Say it. Say it over and over again. Hallelujah. That's the only way you can overcome the challenges and the problems that will try to cover the promise. Unapiga kelele. Hallelujah. Nimekwambia kwenye mchakato chakato ni process nitarudia baadhi ya maneno kwa sababu sijui hapa mnatumia kama labda kuna jina tofauti inawezekana inawezekana mchakato tunatumia ilo ilo wote si hapa tunatumia mchakato ehe mchakato kwenye mchakato kwenye mchakato in the process in the process God wants you to highlight the promises that he gave you because in the process the enemy will try to bury the promise and will try to cover the promise with the circumstances that are seen and the bible says we do not walk by sight we walk by faith we speak the things that are not seen tunaenda pamoja bwana yesu asifiwe now so in the process number one, what do you need to do promises highlight those promises speak them over and over number two, in the process of the promise or assignment or the direction or guidance that god has given you see kama unanielewa mimi nachanganya ile promise ile promise tunaenda pamoja ile promise nachanganya mambo yafuatayo kwenye promise kuna guidance kwenye promise kuna kuna direction kwenye promise kuna kuna commands ambayo Mungu anataka ufanye kwa sababu ya hiyo inayokuwa highlighted kwenye moyo wako naeleweka naeleweka kwa hiyo Mungu anakuguide God guides you according to the promise that he has laid in your heart now when God 
God has given you guidance, when God has given you direction, when God has told you what's going to happen in your life, you need to start doing what? Speak it. Hello? Shout about it. When you are shouting about it, when you are speaking about it, the condition may not look okay. May con the, the condition may look contrary to what you are saying. And people, some people may think you have got problems because what they see and what you say are two different things. Hello? And it doesn't mean that you stop. The Bible says we have the same spirit of faith. I speak. I believe. And then I do what? Tell your neighbor. I believe. And I speak. I don't need to check what you believe. I need to hear what you speak. Then I know what you believe. God has been faithful to me. I was saved as a very young boy. I was 17 when I was saved. And ever since I've been walking with the Lord faithfully. Hallelujah. 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 Are you getting me? And so God gave me a promise that I, 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 I should take care of children. He highlighted love for children in my heart. And I started teaching children. And I started helping people about children. And I adopted children. And then he said, I want you to build a school for children. And I want you to start an organization that will help children. When God was saying that to me, the circumstances and the situation that I was in never ever sounded or looked conducive to that word. Mimi na mke wangu. Halafu akasema wachukue watoto yatima na wenye shida uwasaidie. We took wakati huo anapotuambia another problem. Another problem to that promise was watoto wangu mwenyewe walikuwa wanasoma shule ya private. Nilikuwa nimetoka Kenya, nilikuwa nimesoma hapa Kenya miaka minne nikiwa na watoto wangu wakarudi Tanzania Tanzania shule za msingi primary school zote ni Kiswahili si mnajua kwa hiyo ikabidi niwapeleke private school si kwa kutaka au kwa na hela kwa sababu wamesoma msingi huku hey. naenda Tanzania na lazimika kuwapeleka hela ya kulipa sina they had been sent home so many times kwa kukosa ada na huyo ndiye Mungu anamwambia wakafanye nini Mungu ananiambia nikafanye nini niwasaidie nani watoto wengine the, the very first thought that came into my mind ni kwamba inawezekana Mungu amekosea amesahau kwamba alitakiwa amwambie pastor Jasper Halafu akakosea address akaja kwa nani? Kwa Glorious Show. But anyway, after knowing what I'm preaching to you today, I started saying, I announced, I told the people, I am going to start a school for needy children and orphans and anyone else. There is going to be a very good school for them. And to start, I'm going to start with what I have. Tell your neighbor, start with what you have. Take an action. Faith doesn't wait for God to do everything. Faith takes the first step. And then you say, God, I'm doing what is within my hands. Hata Musa aliambiwa, unanini mkononi mwako? 
nacho usingoje miujiza mikubwa hela nyingi ndio uanze kitu Mungu alichokuambia anza na ulicho nacho in the process so in the process you take an action remember in the process the first thing is you promises that god has promised you and number two, you take an action baada ya kuchukua hatua baada ya kuchukua hatua unajua mungu akaniambiaje nikaanza nikaanza na watoto 14 nyumbani kwangu Sikujua nitawalisha nini? Sikujua watavaa nini? Sikujua itakuwaje Lakini kila siku niliwafundisha kuomba. Nikawafundisha kusema neno la Mungu, wachanga wadogo. Wakawa wanaomba wale watoto. Every day Mungu alikuwa akiprovide. Hallelujah. So when I was praying frustrated because I didn't have much money in the account God said glorious if I give vision I will give provision for the vision Tell your neighbor God gives vision and provision for the vision give you vision that he cannot provide for it doesn't matter how big that vision is god will always provide for that vision always. hallelujah he will always provide huwa naomba kwa kiswahili ndio lugha yetu sana sio I was praying in Kiswahili but God spoke to me in English that glorious if I give vision I will give provision for the vision Hallelujah I had to write a big signboard written God gives vision and provision for the vision From that time I never ever doubted about his provision Hallelujah I took an action Nikahama watoto wakawa wengi wakajaza ile nyumba wakawa 41 Ikabidi nitafute nyumba ya kukodi Another house actually two one dormitory and another one for for class and administration Ile ya dormitory ilikuwa nyumba iko kwenye kama eka mbili hivi There was a big space Na mtu mwenyewe ikakaa miezi sita say a problem after the promise The process ya hiyo problem ni hivi Ninakiri neno la Mungu Ninasema ahadi zake lakini kumbuka nimesema unafanya nini You take an action Don't wait Amen Mezi sita tukawa hatujalipa kodi Nikaanza kumuomba Mungu kwa sababu naogopa hata nikisikia simu ya huyu mtu nasemaje One of the things that the enemy uses to fight against faith is fear. Fear is against faith. Tuko pamoja? Wangapi mnafahamu kinyume cha imani sio kutokuamini? Unbelief is not the opposite of faith. Fear is the opposite of faith. Tuko pamoja? Fear is So in the process the enemy tempts and tests you with fear. Kwa hiyo nikaanza kutaka kuogopa. I remember. Nahitaji kuendelea kulisema neno la Mungu. Nikasema Mungu ndiye amenileta hapa. God will provide. Nilipokuwa naombea jambo hilo Mungu akaniambia, "Go talk to 
to the owner, ask him to sell it to you. Rent, rent is miezi sita. Nina deni ya miezi mingapi? Tell neighbor, thank God for the problem. It's an opportunity for God to prove himself faithful. It's not, the problem is not to swallow you. It's not for you to be drowned by the water. It's not for you to be consumed by the fire. The fire is there to purify you. The water is there to cleanse you. As long as you walk into that water, into that fire with the Lord Almighty. Nikapita, nikaomba, halafu mungu wakasema, muambia kuzie. Kumbuka huyu ni mtu ambaye hajalipa nini? Nikaenda, nikamwambia sir, I was wondering if you would like to sell your property to us. Unajua alifanyaje? Wewe hapo niliposema unataka kufanyaje? Kama umeshuka kulipa rent. Eh eh. Unataka kuacha sana. Eti. Si unataka kucheka eh? Basi naye alicheka kama wewe. Akanuliza, oh, what about my rent? Nikaambe include it in the selling price. Yani ile pesa unayousa, weka hapo juu. Haka tabasamu, haka enda, haka ongea na mkiwa hake, haka aja, haka nipa bay. Nikarudi, nikaambe, okay, we will do that, we will buy it. Nikarudi, nikaita watoto, na jaribiwa woga, lakini nasema mungu wa mesema. Hallelujah. Tukaomba. Tukaona siku ya kufunga na kuomba. Tunamuita mungu. Baada ya kuomba, mtu moja akatuma email, akasema glorious, nipe bank account yako. Nataka kutuma hela ya kununua iyo. Shule ulio sema, mna muomba mungu kununua. One man paid for the whole amount to buy the house and the land that existed. Mpe Yesu Christo Makofi. Hallelujah. Mungu akadeambia. And because you have obeyed me, I will take this organization to other nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can a lot of international organizations starts from other countries to Africa. This one, I will take it to Africa, to other nations. Hallelujah. Nikamambia sawa baba. And then he gave me the names. Unakubuka mahali tuko? When you promise, bad a promise, okay. eh? process, I love you. Problem when you process, Unachukua nini, Unalisema, Unasema Hadi. You shout about what God has told you over and over because you don't want to get away from what God has told you. Right. Amen. And the second thing that you do in the process, you take an action regardless of how awkward it seems. Wow, action. Amen. Fanya. Hata kama watu wanashanga, au hata kama we mwenye unashanga. So, akanipa hizi lenchi. Would you like to know how, I mean, what were the countries? Akanamba, you will take this organization to New Zealand, Norway, South Korea, and USA. Hallelujah. From Africa, you will incorporate it in those countries. And I can tell you, I knew some people in the U.S., but I I didn't know anyone in the rest of the countries that he mentioned. And funny enough, ilipofika wakatu wakwenda USA to establish organization huko, 
Hakunipeleka mahali najua mtu. Akadambia go to Seattle, Washington. Kwa hiyo nikaenda Seattle, Washington sijui yeyote. And so what did I do? Nili apply for visa nikapata I boarded the plane going where? Seattle, Washington. I stayed there. Prayed. My time won't allow you to give you the details. I have good news for you. Finally, the organization was incorporated in the USA and there was a board in the USA through that trip. Ungependa kupiga makofi kwa Bwana Yesu? Au unafikiri na kueleza jambo langu mimi? Hadithi za, zangu singetaka uzijue lakini ningetaka sana usikie hadithi za Bwana Yesu Kristo. Ningetaka usikie sana mambo anayoyafanya Mungu wa mbinguni kwa yeyote anayemwamini. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it was time for New Zealand. There were lots of oppositions. It was time for South Korea. There are lots of oppositions. Time will not allow me. Next time, I'll give you some stories. Oh, I will tell the pastor and pastor will share some of the times. Hallelujah. But as I'm talking today, yes, our organization is incorporated in South Korea, is incorporated in New Zealand, is incorporated in Norway, it is incorporated in the United States, and we have boards. Ninaposema hivyo sio kitu kikubwa, sio sio organization kubwa sana. Lakini at least iko. Unanipata? Na at least kuna support kwa watoto inayotoka huko. Kule South Korea nikiwa airport wakanambia fill in the forms. Yaani unaenda wapi na unalala wapi? Nikaanza kuwaza kwa sababu sikuwa najua. Akanambia can you stay aside sir? Nika stay aside wakaisha watu wote. Nikawa nimebaki pale. Akaja akanambia umepata anwani nikaambia bado. Akakasirika. Akaandika alichoandika akaambia next time you need to go where you are going. Na kweli sikuwa najua. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the process remember to speak what God has told you in the process remember to take an action that he tells you to take it doesn't matter how risky it is you take it nikaenda kwenye mlima wa maombi nikaomba mungu sasa nani unanipa akaamba i have someone i will connect you with hapa south korea huyo atakuwa ndiye representative wa new life foundation hapa south korea Omba ni muone hakuna. Siku tatu nimefunga hakuna. Nikarudi so kwenye kanisa hii ya Yongi Cho. Nikakuta wana overnight prayer meeting. I attended an overnight prayer meeting. Nilikuwa nimebakiza siku mbili tiketi yangu nirudi Tanzania. Bado sijaona mtu. Siku hiyo wamepiga magoti wa Korea wanaomba mimi ninaomba nimesimama na tembea hivi. Nachungulia kama Mungu ataniambia ni huyu. Naendelea kuomba naangalia nikifikiri ataniambia huyu hapa. Nikaomba nikachoka saa kumi na moja ilikuwa ndio siku nifungue. Nianze kula. Saa kumi na moja nina njaa. Nimechoka nikatoka nje kwenye kanisa lile wana vending machines. Nikaenda kwenye vending machine. Nikajaribu kunywa hot chocolate lakini kila kitu kimeandikwa kikorea kwa nikataka kuangalia sana ni ipi katika hapa kahawa ni ipi hot chocolate ni ipi wakati najaribu akatokea binti mmoja akaniambia do you understand nikaambia i guess hii ndio hot chocolate kwa sababu kikombe kipo lakini sasa huwezi kujua kikombe cha kahawa au cha nani vyote si ni vikombe na rangi ya kahawa na ya chocolate sinafanana Nikaamba I guess ni akasema yes. Baada akaanza kuongea a very perfect English. 
Nikamwambia what do you do? Akasema I just came from China trying to do a mission work there. But I've realized God is not sending me to China. Nikamwambia eh? Akasema now God has laid a special burden in my heart for the children of Africa. Hebu piga makofi yako bwana Yesu. Ona fikiri nilimwangaliaje na kumwambiaje? Nikamwangalia nikasema okay. <laughs> Wakati nikimwangalia na kujaribu kufungua mdomo ni sema roho wa Bwana akasema ndio huyu. Nikamwambia do you have time? Akasema leo ndio siku pekee ambayo niko off. Maana yake na time siku nzima. Nika mwambie unaweza tukakaa tukatafuta restaurant ilo kanisa ni kubwa lina restaurants na kila kitu tukaenda restaurant tukaketi nikaambia nieleze kidogo juu ya huo mzigo akanieleza nikampa store yangu hiyo niliyokupa nilikuwa nimeandaa na mafomu ya kusign kwa representative na kumuelekeza atakavyofanya mambo ya new life kule Korea the rest is history hallelujah so now we have that representative in south korea from 2003 up to this time hata mwaka huu hata mwaka huu october i was in south korea preaching in so many churches kwa sababu ya huyo ambaye anapanga leo utakwenda hapa leo utakwenda hapa kwenye hayo makanisa na Mungu amekuwa akinipeleka huko over and over kwa sababu ya uaminifu wa neno lake mwambie jirani yako Mungu ni muaminifu trust the process Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now. So after promise then comes process or problems. Zinaenda pamoja tu. Chochote chatangulia. Amen. And then there comes provision. Hallelujah. So what starts? Can you shout? Promise, process, problem and then provision. If you go through the process and the problem, there comes what? The provision. God will always be faithful to do what he said he will do. He is always faithful. Now how do you overcome during the process and the problem? You need to remind yourself over and over about what he said. The same thing. Amen. Hallelujah. You realize that he was using the same method with with Abraham. Alikuwa amekuja akampa Abraham problem ambayo ilikuwa beyond akili zake. Sio? Mtu wa miaka zaidi ya 90 unamwambia atapata mtoto. Tuko pamoja. Halafu si atapata mtoto mataifa yatatoka kwake. Unajua ungemwambia utapata mtoto mmoja angesema sawa kuna kitu labda Bwana atafanya siyo nini. Hichi kitoto kimoja sawa. Lakini anambe mataifa yatatoka kwako. Hallelujah. Now God came back to him. Nimehesabu ni zaidi ya mara 17 Mungu akirudia neno lile 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 over and over in different fashion in different ways just to make sure that analipokea tena. Mwambie jirani yako kusoma neno lile lile. Ahadi ile ile sio kitu. 
Unajua hata Paulo alisema writing to you the same thing I ni bothi doesn't bother me. Hai hai nisumbui kuandikia neno lile lile. Kuna watu wanafikiri mchungaji akirudia ujumbe akarudia akarudia ni kwa kuwa kakosa. Wakati mwingine unahitaji usikie hata mara 40. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you getting it? So overcome fear. Fear will always come through the process. Itakuwaje? Ikishindwaje? Kwani wewe unafanya? Nikishindwa after all sio project yangu. Haleluya. Utukufu sio wa nani? Unaweza kuogopa tu kama utukufu ni wako wako. Lakini kama utukufu ni wa Mungu, huitaji kuogopa. Tell your neighbor, huitaji kuogopa. So the provision. Mungu baada ya kumwaidi Abraham, utashangaa Mungu aliendelea kumfanyia miujiza over and over hata kabla hajampa mtoto. Amen. Alimwambia utabarikiwa. And, and then uh, he comes and he tells him I am your reward. Mimi nani? Mimi sababu yako. I'm your reward. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hallelujah. I want you to see something. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 12. Maybe we, we 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 should start with 13 and then we go back to 12 for some reasons. Are you there? Read chapter 13 verse 2. Abram had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and in gold. Abraham alikuwa nini? Tajiri sana. Amen. Hakumwaidi tu kumpa mtoto, akampa na dhahabu, akampa na fedha, akampa na nini? Mifugo. Hallelujah. Kwa hiyo mwambie jirani yako, Mungu alichokiaidi atakifanya. Halafu alipomwaidi mtoto, alimpa hakumpa. Alimpa. Bado kwenye process akatikiswa akampata Ishmael. Akaambia mm mm mm. mm. Ahadi yangu inabaki pale pale. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Now one thing that you need to do for all that God has promised you to be fulfilled and not only to be fulfilled and for you to keep on standing in faith is when you learn to build an altar. Mwambie jirani yako build an altar. So the, sec, the, 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 the the last thing that I want to mention is now the promise that is promised by you the promise from you so the first one is promise he promise ya nani ya mungu alafu ya pili process kwa kutoka kwa nani kwenye hiyo process kuna nini kuna problem na baada ya problem ukisimama ukashinda kuna nini kuna provision baada ya provision na hata kabla ya provision remember to promise remember to promise hii nataka kila mtu asikie mbona hivyo kuna watu wasemi hapa pastor wamenyimwa ni marufuku kanisa ni kuongea hamna marufuku hiyo pastor amesema hamna marufuku kwa hiyo shout number one bado jamani mbona mbona hivyo tena number one bado 
kidogo. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. And number five. Mbona bado kidogo. Can you say promise from me? Promise from me. What does it mean? Now let's go back to the Bible and you will see what I want you to see. Now let's go to chapter 12. Verse 7. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Kwa hiyo, Abraham anajenga nini? Altar. Baada ya kupewa ahadi, anajenga madhabao. Na umba uelewe kwenye madhabao kuna nini? Kwenye madhabao siku zote there is worship hallelujah madhabao inabeba worship it means God I'm promising you my worship to you it doesn't matter what you are going to bless me with my worship is going to be there I'm going to worship you I will remain faithful to you hallelujah nini tena kiko kwenye madhabao giving offering actually that is the biggest part of Mother Bao. Are you there? Are you there? Mother Bao. Abraham Kila Alipopewa Ahad Namungu Alijenga Mother Bao. Man, I promise you, God, it doesn't matter how higher you will take me, it doesn't matter how rich I'm going to be, it doesn't matter how big I'm going to be or to get. I will worship you, I will remain faithful to you, I will keep on giving, I will keep on supporting the work of God. wamepoteza provision yao kwa sababu walikuwa wajinga walipobarikiwa wakafikiri ni vyao wakapanda mambawa wakawa wakubwa wengine walipandishwa kicheo kidogo tu kilipotea kwa sababu they didn't know how to handle it tell your neighbor learn how to handle blessings <laughs> Watu wengi sana wajiku kuhendo blessings ukiwa bariki kidogo umewapoteza. Na Mungu hataki kupoteza watu wake. Hebu mwambie jirani yako wewe ndio yule unaoogopa kubarikiwa. Mbona msemi tena? Muulize jirani yako wewe ndio yule anayeogopwa asibarikiwe. Because you lack the promise. Now I want you to come back and be at a place whereby you will be blessed because you will promise. And what will you promise? Build an altar. Jenga madhabao kwenye maisha yako. Weka madhabao ya Mungu kwenye baraka zako. Weka madhabao ya Mungu kwenye cheo chako. I want to encourage you this morning. If you want to remain in faith, remember after the promise, after the process, after the pro problem and after the provision, don't forget to build an altar. Mahali ambapo Mungu ataendelea kutukuzwa katika maisha yako.